praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad therein. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, we welcome you into this place on this morning. Just have your way, oh God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name on this morning, God. We welcome your presence in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Lord, we just say thank you all today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We lift you up on this morning, God. Hallelujah. For you're worthy of all the praise, Lord God. You're worthy of all the honor and the glory, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We provoke your Holy Spirit in this place, place oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Anything that's not like you has to go, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just rest upon us on this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Glory to your name. We magnify you all this morning, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Just have your way in this place on this morning, God. Let it be all of you and none of us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Worship. Worship him in this place on this morning. Give him what he deserves on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, just have your way, God. Have your way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands in his presence on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. We give it out to you all this morning, God. Hallelujah. We surrender all, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We could have been dead. God, but you gave us another chance to get it right, God. So for that, we say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We woke up with the activities of our limbs, God. So we say thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we have breath in our bodies, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us another chance to come into the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
say yes. Above everything. My mind say yes. Yes to the Lord. Yes to your way, Jesus. And it's still your will and your way.
While you sit back and watch God work, you must still stay prayed up. You must repent and pray. Stay in the presence of God. Seek his face daily. Be careful of the flock of the enemy because they come in. Every time you go to do good, evil is always present. You must resist the devil and he will flee. Don't give no room or energy to the devil. He can't do no more than the Lord allowed him to do. God gave us power over the enemy. So stomp on the devil's head. God knows exactly what he's doing. He is doing nothing. He, he is doing, he is doing, he knows exactly what he's doing. Nothing he does is a mistake. He does everything for a reason and for a purpose. All he want to know is, do you trust him? If you go to Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Not some of thine heart, but all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. So that means you can't lean unto your own understanding. You have to lean unto God's understanding. In all thine ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So... I trust him because it's in his word. Yeah, yeah. Sit back and watch God work. He will not lead you astray. He will lead and God will guide you in the right direction. You must not always, you might not always understand and know the plan of God, but just know and trust his way is the best way. He knows the reason and the purpose for everything that he does. God, don't make no mistakes. Yeah. You don't want to miss out on what God is doing. A new beginning is about to take place in your life. All right, yeah. Greater, you shall reap if you faint not. Miracle signs and wonders. Manifestation is about to take place. Yes, yes. Somebody ought to praise him right yes. there. Yes. Thank him for everything that he's doing. For everything he's doing at this present time. Thank him for everything that he's done. And thank him for the things that he's going to do. 
Don't let nothing or nobody distort you from serving and praising God. So, again, the topic is sit back and watch God work. Sometimes just don't answer. Mm, my God. 
And then there are some times when the Lord will answer. But then he would still say, just watch me work it out. Every person that's in here today, if you will, if you would just get your Bibles. Yeah. And if you have your own Bible, I want you to go over to Nehemiah. And go over to, I believe that is the sixth chapter of Nehemiah. I remember when I it's going to be Nehemiah chapter 6 but I remember when I was coming up in ministry in 2005 when I was minister bold and I was getting ready to minister just being minister bold in 2005 so that kind of gives some of y'all a, a, a guesstimated time frame of how long I've been preaching Amen. and I've been Ministering the word of God. Amen. Now you got to go a little bit further back. Because it actually started before 2005. Mm -hmm. Just in 2005 I became on the platform right. of the viewers on YouTube and throughout social media. But I was known as just this little nobody who was trying to tell somebody and hope that that somebody can go and tell somebody about one person that can save truly anybody. I remember when I was younger, and I used to preach. My pastor used to say, wait for your hooping. Don't seek to hoop. Because when you're hooping, you're always going to have to hoop. If hooping get them, hooping going to have to keep them. He said, but when you get a flock that can handle teaching, mm -hmm. then you know you got you some stable people. Amen. Not everybody can handle teaching. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can handle preaching mixed with teaching. Mm -hmm. But in 2005, I remember I looked at Nehemiah mm -hmm. and with my Comedian self. I never heard it said before, but it was, I guess it was God at the time who gave it to me. Because mm -hmm. others said that the way I said it wasn't the way that they said it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Nehemiah needs stockings mm -hmm. because I saw the word knee high. Mm -hmm. So I put it in my mind to have a sense of humor mm -hmm. when it comes down to the word of God yeah. and not just preach the Bible in such a way that it will condemn others yeah. and yet me myself not feel convicted or condemned by some point right. within the parameters of my teaching. So when I went to Nehemiah, I called him Nehi, who needs some stockings. <laughs> and they didn't like that. 
but it was okay with me because the message was really particularly at that year and that time it was the message was pertaining not to people but it was pertaining to hanging up some stuff sometimes we don't understand and I'm already in here we leave places God will sometime remove you from a place. Uh -huh. and I remember when we was in the country yeah. and the Lord began to bless us in the country. Uh -huh. The years that we spent down on Black Lake uh -huh. was great years. Uh -huh. Many people prophesied they said he was a fly by night. But we stayed five years. Many people said he was taking the money and spending it up. But we bought chairs, paint. We bought flooring. We bought brand new commodes. I remember when we experienced six months of a zero balance on an electric bill. And I kept calling Swepco trying to figure out what is going on with the electric? Why we haven't had an electric bill? And they said, you've been getting a bill but it's been zero balance. We had a season where God will give rain a word and then God will give correction a word that comes with discipline. Now the people choose which part of the word they wanted. Some choose to just take the rhema word but didn't want correctional and discipline word. And I remember when God kept speaking to me and he said that your season is going to come up. Mm -hmm. I have some more work for you. And God kept showing me every reason why it was time to shift from where we are mm -hmm. to where he wanted us to get to. I fought with leaving. I fought with leaving the country. Mm -hmm. Until I felt like Jacob who wrestled with the Lord. In spite of people mm -hmm. taking what they believe God said to them. Mm -hmm. For you. As if what God said to them. God did not say to you something totally different. Many people said, God said for you to be here, to stay here. But then when I looked at it, we had gotten down to the folks that was down there were fighting so much among themselves. The people that was down there was in a mixed up mind frame. There were some things that went on and took place. God started raising up people and then other folks started tearing them back down. My God. God will send people down there who had never been used a day in their life. Mm -hmm. And yet we would have somebody who would go behind the church back and will speak ill of the ministry. And that person who had just come into the knowledge of the Holy Ghost or God or Jesus, who had just came and gave their life to the Lord and ready to go forward, was torn up. I looked around and I questioned 
many days, many nights. Lord, why do you have me as a servant? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to turn my life upside down like this, at least give me some people that will stick with me when the going gets tough. Amen. Give me some people that will stand by me when it seems like we in the pile of ants. Uh -huh. Give me some folks that will stay when fire is thrown at us. And God then in return said the only way I can give you that is that I got to give you the battle. Without a battle, you don't know who with you. Yeah. Without a battle, you don't know who's against you. Yeah. I know they might not want to hear this, but I'm in Nehemiah the whole time. I'm already in the first chapter. Uh -huh. they was, we was taken from one place to one other place. Uh -huh. And God said, your work wasn't completed, so you're going to have to go back. We left from back to Shreveport and went back to the country. Because the first time, I did like Elijah did. Mm -hmm. I didn't run from a Jezebel. I just moved for peace sake. Yeah. Because of the stuff that was going on. Oh yeah, they shot at me coming from church. Mm. Pow, shot a, a rifle at me. Made me get out the car and ask him, is that all you got? <laughs> You're going to try to kill me. At least shoot to kill me. But because of the fact you can't kill what God has blessed. Amen. Amen. Don't you let nobody think that they can take you out before God's time. Amen. The Bible says he knows your end from the beginning. That's it. Not only that, but I thought that there was one particular person who was supposedly be Truly my ace bone coon, mm -hmm. who was really supposed to be the person who was walking in ministry with me. I kind of find out that that individual thought because of where I was is because of what they was doing. My God. They took their focus off of God and put their focus on themselves. Mm -hmm. I never thought that I would find people who will go the distance and go the mile to help the enemy itself try and bring you to a place where you seem to have no hope and no help. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, but God. but God. But when God is in control mm -hmm. of what he purposed in your life, Others may seem like they got the upper hand, mm -hmm. but God will just let you remain under. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes when people's hand is so busy being upper over you, mm -hmm. God will ask you that question, how low will you go? Mm -hmm. And if you say, Lord, I'll go down like the woman with the issue of blood and I will crawl if I have to, yeah. just to get out of the presence of an issue mm -hmm. and get to where my Jesus is at. I know if I get to Jesus and touch him, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to be made whole. Amen. Amen. I had good days. We had good days in the country. Yeah, yeah. The church had good days in the country, but yet RWCM was one of the ministry that was very feared by people. Mm -hmm. Because people said he practiced witchcraft. Mm -hmm. There was no way that this man can Look you in your eyes and read you like that. That's witchcraft. Uh, uh, Jesus said these words. If then that be true, then how can Satan cast out Satan <laughs> and his kingdom not be divided? They told, they said the same thing about Jesus. He got an Beelzebub. He's a spirit man. He's a demon worker. And Jesus said, well, if that be the case, then evil can't cast out evil. Mm -hmm. They fight each other trying to take over the principalities and rule as powers. <laughs> but Nehemiah, let me get to this. Nehemiah was a 
noble man. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. Let's look at Nehemiah 1 right fast. Chapter 1 of Nehemiah. Amen. He was very noble. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachalia, and it came to pass in the month Shisu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, noble people was in there, mm -hmm. that Hannah and I, one of my brethren came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem, Nehemiah is asking questions. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah wants to know what's going on with Jerusalem. And if you notice, they begin to start talking to him about what happened. We came into a warfare and we had went to war with the enemy, but somehow they prevailed against us. Not only did the enemy prevail, but the king had taken many of us into captivity. And verse 3 said, And they said unto him, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction. In other words, they got a lot of humiliation going on. Uh -huh. And they got a lot of things that's reproaching them. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Now, if you will, journey over to the sixth chapter. And let's look at the third verse. Amen. And let's look at five and one. Five and one says, And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. Mm -hmm. For there were that said, we are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, houses, that we might buy corn because of the daughter, or because of the dearth, rather, meaning the famine. There were also that said, we have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards, yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brother and our brother and our children and our children and their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them did y'all see that? Uh -huh. For other men have our land in vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself, this Nehemiah, and I rebuked the nobles. Do you see where I told you he was a nobleman himself? Uh -huh. I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, you extract Ushery, every one of his brother, and I set a great assemble against them. And if you notice, in verse 19, think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Chapter 6. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah mm -hmm. and Jeshon mm -hmm. and Arabin and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors 
upon the gates. But I did build the wall. Mm -hmm. I did build it where there was no breach. Mm -hmm. That sin valley and Jesus unto, they sent unto me some messengers saying, come, let us meet together in someone of the village in the plain of Ono. <laughs> Somebody say, oh no. Oh, no. It says it for itself. Oh no. oh no. But they brought, they thought rather, to do me mischief. In other words, they thought they were going to do me some harm. Uh -huh. That's why you have to be careful. Sometimes people want you to come back so they can do more harm uh -huh. than what they did before. Yeah, yeah. He says, they thought to do me some mischief. Mm -hmm. Trying to pull me from my work. Mm -hmm. Get me distracted. Mm -hmm. Trying to get me to believe that you got my best interest at heart. Yeah, yeah. But you come to distract me. But if I go with you to a secret place that says, oh no. Oh, no. Then that ought to let me know. That is something about that place. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah wasn't stupid. I know y'all don't like to hear that word in church, but you use it in your house. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't stupid. Mm -hmm. He wasn't ignorant. So this is what takes place in verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them saying, now this is why I say he wasn't stupid because the people that sent messengers to tell him something, they got stopped by Nehemiah's messengers. Yeah. And Nehemiah went and told his messengers what to go back and tell them, uh -huh. to go and tell them. Uh -huh. And as Nehemiah said, I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a Great work. That's when folks want to know your business. Uh -huh. How you been doing? I'm doing a great work. Mm -hmm. How you holding up? I'm holding up good. Amen. How you living? I'm still living. You talking to me. Amen. How things been going? Here? You see the evidence. Amen. You don't look like I know because you put me through a lot of stuff that I don't look like what I come through. Yet I send messengers unto them saying, I am doing a good work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Can y'all say amen? Amen. amen. Mm, take for a subject today. The work is too great for me to stop now. Amen. Amen. The work is too great for me to stop now. And that's not just personal for me. But I would like for you to make it personal for you. This is right here is what is going to fade us hard because I got to lecture a little bit. And I'm going to start this off by simply saying for you to observe. Always watch when you are walking in good, always watch for potholes. Amen. Watch for pitfalls. Watch for unnecessary, unwanted attention. That comes your way. Watch for it. When you're walking in good. Amen. When you're walking in good. Not that evil is present. Mm -hmm. But before evil even get there. There is something contrary to what is good. Amen. And that is bad. Bad company can corrupt 
good habits. Sometimes they say it's not about what you know, it's who you know. But have you ever turned that thing around to understand that sometimes it's who they know, which is me? And if they go connect with me, with what they look like, that's what I'm going to look like because now I'm letting what's good be corrupted by what is bad. My God. I check my parameters now more than what I ever did before. And I used to think I wanted friends. But I come to find this out that you can't trust friends. I know y'all ain't going to talk to me. I've come to find out that you cannot trust people who say, trust me. Y'all quiet in here. When it comes down to starting a work, when you start the work, just know that something is going to try and oppose the work that you started. Uh -huh. Let's go there. You start a work in a relationship. And watch what happens in that relationship when you're walking in good. Uh -huh. When you're walking in good, here comes somebody trying to fish up what is bad. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you how it goes. Have you ever heard somebody come and tell you about who you with? Uh -huh. Before you actually got with them good enough? Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. I must be talking to y'all over here. Y'all like, oh. But have you ever had somebody to just give you all of the reasons why you should not? But they don't go and give you the reasons of why you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I would have stayed behind the scenes and never brought what I have to the forefront, uh -huh. you would still be thinking everything is all good uh -huh. in my life. My life. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to bring this old thing up. I remember when. I had told one of the sisters, and I'm not calling her name, but I had told one of the sisters that was a part of the ministry at the time, I said that the Lord told me to bless you with a truck. And the truck that God told me to give you was my truck. Yes. <laughs> I haven't even had it a good six months. Uh -huh. And God told me to ask her, can she stay? to be blessed. Yeah, yeah. But give her some instructions. Uh -huh. You can't get the truck uh -huh. from the man of God that God is going to use to go through the man and give it to you yeah. until you bring the man of God a man. Amen, amen. And then gave her a twofold instruction. Uh -huh. Said not go any kind of man but you got to bring a husband. Amen. Now watch God. The sister left the church uh -huh. for a couple of months. The truck was still waiting for the sister and her husband. Uh -huh. The sister didn't get the truck until she brought a man. Uh -huh. And then I had to check the man out through the spirit. And when the man came to me, he came to me not about the truck. Right. He came to me about the ministry. Uh -huh. God used me to speak into his life and declare what he is before he actually ever had a chance of becoming what he should have been. Uh -huh. yeah. And watch how, watch how God did. God put them two together. They get married. And then the man, who's now a husband, comes and now he says, do you still have the truck? Yeah. Before the truck was even given, when the word 
got out that she was getting blessed with a truck. Uh -huh. Watch how bad folks do. Uh -huh. They start going and making lies and saying things. Oh, don't nobody just give nobody nothing for free like that. Don't nobody just give away nothing like that. It got to be something about that. Uh-uh. It got to be some strings attached to that. But what happens when you look at a person who got the heart of God and we always say you can't be God given no much, no matter how much you try. But when God get ready to release something, you got folks in your ear. God released it and gave it. The truck blessed them. I believe they still maintain the truck right this day. But it wasn't for me to keep. It wasn't for me to keep. Now, let's go here. God took us through some things in the ministry, and yet we had a sin ballot in the ministry that was still tagging along. Remember when we started the work over on Linwood? When people heard that reunited with Christ ministry and came back to Shreveport. We had people coming and joining. We had young people. We had teenagers who was going through stuff. Who was in the need of some real counseling and some real help. But we sometimes get so caught up on ministry until we forget to nurture people and nurse them to health. Sometimes we want folks who come and give their life to Jesus. We want them to be saved today and be saved from here on out. Some people, it don't work like that way. Some folks, when they come, they come in because they struggle with something and you might have the answer to their solution or their problem at that moment and when they come through it, they'll show you how much they appreciate you but they might be seasonal, and if they got to leave, then the best thing to know is that they left with a seed sown. Amen. Amen. Versus people coming and you think, oh, because the church is growing, this is where people get confused about what church is. Amen. They see the church growing, and they go, oh, the Holy Ghost is over in there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it ain't the Holy Ghost that's keeping people. It's just an edifying, inspirational, non-judgment, don't convict me, just type of message. Yeah. We water down and got sugar on his lips. Yeah. Or maybe people are just there because of the fact that they mama been there all their life and they don't know no other place to go. Maybe some folks are in places that they have outgrown and because of the fact that it's just five, six people over there and guess what? I'm just going to stay right here because my mama grew here. Her name's still reserved on this seat and I'm now sitting in the seat where your name going to be right under her name. When Nehemiah came to a place where he questioned them, what's going on? They said, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The walls are torn down. Nehemiah said, well, what are the rest of the folks? The folks that was left behind. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful when you walking in God and then you got other folks who have to be left behind. And then when you turn around to come across their path, they are no longer walking with God. Those that stop walking with God are going to be the ones to try and make you look like you ain't even walking with a rock. Because you kept on going. Uh -huh. You have to be careful because when people spend a lifetime trying to get you to see what someone else did to them and don't let things go, guess what? You're going to experience bad mm -hmm. in your good. Yeah. How many of you feel like sometimes you just want to just throw the towel in? Huh? 
How, how many of you feel like sometimes, you know, because the fact you feel like you don't have enough people to go and talk to. Yeah. So the first thing you say is, since I can't go talk to nobody, I, I make my own mind up. I'm, I'm done with it. Oh, huh? Uh -huh. Do you ever get to that point in your life? But then do you ever get like Nehemiah when you hear about certain things? Mm -hmm. And then you know the work that you start. You say, wait a minute. If I just forfeit what I started, then it's going to come to being incomplete. When it comes down to God, God is not going to let you move from where you are until you finish the work that he has planted you in that place to finish. Can I tell you that some people can't get out of certain relationships because why? They ain't finished the work? Did y'all hear what I say? Some folks can't go too much further in a relationship because why? They ain't even started their work. Some people cannot even go into places that God would have them to go, like what they've been prophesied to. You're going to go to the nations, and the reason why you can't go to the nations is because you can't do right in the country. And I'm not talking about the country, meaning the dirt roads where there's long trails and alleys and ducks and deers running across the street. No, I'm talking about within your own city. How is it that you want to go to Nigeria or Africa or go to Haiti or go before the White House, but yet and still, you won't even go before your own governor, not your own mayor. You won't even stand up and walk with the police. We need a work started in Shreveport. And guess what? It's going to take more than just some storefront body, body, rowdy, rowdy preachers. We got all these jumping up fly by night preachers. These prophets. These new modern day preachers. The ones who can't teach you the scriptures. But they show can quote them, but they can't teach you how to walk in the scriptures. We got these new modern day type of people who coming up on the scene and declaring that they are working with signs and wonders. Your tongue is not a sign and a wonder. There's a work that the church has started. And I need to go ahead and review this. Now we finna face God's church versus Satan's church. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? The church of Satan is real. Mm -hmm. The church of Satan got powers. Mm -hmm. Got so much powers that the scriptures say he going to fool the very elect if it were possible. Mm -hmm. My job as an overseer, as a shepherd, as the angel of the house, is to give you balanced bread. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give you a whole loaf of bread and yet it's all green under the bottom. And then I go and tell you, oh, don't worry about that little fungus or that mold or that mildew. Just peel the edges out of the bread. It's still fresh. No, it's my job to give you fresh bread. So if I got to go into the kitchen and get the recipe and I have to go before whoever gives me the recipe, which is God, then I got to take it and bake it and once the bread is ready, that's Jesus. I got to break bread. Nehemiah said, I heard about Jerusalem because I asked. Now, what if he never would have asked? What are you asking about in your community? Are you asking about some things in your life? There's a work that you all done started. Can I go here to be real with us? Somebody say, be real. A work you started. And the devil don't want you to complete that work you done started because if you complete the work that you started, you're going to make the devil mad. There's a work you done started that if you get back in the right place, God can open up better doors for you, but the devil don't want you to start back where you need to start back and pick up what you need to pick up because if you pick it back up, then the devil himself knows he's in trouble. a work. Everything has a work to it. Mm -hmm. The scripture said work while it's day. Yeah. For when night come, no man can do no work. Mm -hmm. Not just I have started a work. You, 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 you. Everybody have started a work. Amen. Oh, I started in school, but I dropped out. No, get back up and go back. Mm. But I, I might be behind. No, still go back. 
if you just learn to just obey, go back, then favor will go before you. Do you hear what I'm saying? There is provisions that God has made, God has set up. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm just going to be the pastor that can go before the courts and can get some people off. Why? Because my credibility. That's why I stay out of harm's way. That's why, I, that's why I stay out of trouble. That's why I stay off the market and I stay out of the view of people. Why? Because when folks go through something and they want to come to AB and say, hey man, look, I need some help. At least my record can speak for itself. You got a lot of preachers right now, they can't they can't go before the courts. They can't go and talk to the judge. They can't. I'm secret about mine. I don't have to show it on social media. Go live. No. Very secretive. My grandmother had favor like that. Where police officers used to come and counsel with her. Well, the city councilmen used to come and counsel with her. The DA used to come and counsel with her. My grandmama had favor like that. And if she had favor, the devil is a liar. I would not let her die in that favor that God put on her life. Go straight to the grave with her. Satan used a lie. I'm going to ask for that type of favor. I believe that the work God started me at the city of Shreveport is not just to have me there as a water department worker. Uh -huh. Many people question, well, when are you going to put right choice back on the road? And I tell them, right choice paperwork never went under. It's still legal. Amen. I just ain't put the vehicles on the road. Uh -huh. And the reason why, because it's not the season for it yet. Yeah, yeah. But when that season gets come to its fruition and God say now then there is nothing that's going to be able to oppose right choice amen, amen. listen when God give you something that he have not given nobody else and you can't find it nowhere then you better know it's of God amen. let me tell you something right now when Jesus came on the scene there was a lot of Joshua and Hosea and Hosannas but there wasn't a lot of Jesus on the scene so when Jesus came on the scene, they were trying to figure out who is he? Where did he come from? Uh -huh. Even with John. There wasn't no popular name John then, especially coming through Zachariah's lineage. Uh -huh. Why would you name him John? Nobody in your family named John. The name John means God is gracious. And God was gracious to John. Oh, no, he wasn't. He allowed John the Baptist to get his head cut off. That still was God being gracious. Because he could have put the man in some hot oil. He could have put the man upside down and let him be stabbed into the ground. He could have had the people to break the man's bones up, put him out there in the lake and let the sharks eat him up. But because of the fact the way God saw his end from the beginning, God still declared that he was gracious. Why? Because because of John the Baptist preacher repentance in the wilderness and crying out for the people to repent to God, guess what happened? Jesus was able to come through, but before Jesus came through, grace was right there on the scene. John was an act of grace. Jesus was an act of mercy. But after that, the Holy Ghost said, I ain't playing no more games. You started a work, and you're going to get back to it. You started something good, and you got to get back to it. Look at somebody and say, get back to the real you. Get back to the real you. Say, no, don't come give me that stuff that you thought that was you. But that real you, tell them that you, that you showed me. The real you, tell them, don't come giving me no fake stuff. But get back to that real you. You know, that person that's kind hearted. You know, that person that's sweet. You know, that person that can tell you off without you even knowing they just told you off until you got down the street and you were like, wait a minute, you just told me off, but uh, you did it in love. Come on, tell them, say, get back to the real you. Get back to the saved you. Tell them, tell them, you, you got too much ideology going on in your mind. You got too many other folks you looking at trying to be like, get back to who you are. <laughs> Nehemiah told the messengers to go tell Sanballat Neil. I'm not meeting you in the old note. I'm not 
meeting you down old note. Not going there. Not going to meet you in a secret place because you want to do me some harm. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact you mad. You mad because the work that God got me doing and God has started with me is able to be done. You're mad because favor followed me even when I was in captive. Sam bad and them walked away from Nehemiah. Yeah. Sam bad and them thought Nehemiah wasn't who he was if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah didn't even try to prove nothing. He went on to work. He asked the king, he said, king, mm -hmm. if you would just allow me to go back and build my family's legacy. He said, I'll get back here and do what you want me to do after that. Mm -hmm. Now that's loyalty. Yeah. You got some folks can't go and then know where they are. They don't supposed to be and then say, you know what, my season up, I got to get back to where God want me. But all of a sudden, Nehemiah say, because the king asked him, why is your countenance so sad? Why is your face so sad? He didn't do like some of us do. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with me. And you know something wrong with you. He didn't go, oh, no, nah, I can't, uh-uh. Now, nah, I'm just waiting on God. I'm, I'm letting God deal with me. No, nah, quit lying. You lying. You know you're lying. <laughs> Your face sad. Something wrong with you. Nehemiah turned around and said, to the king, he said, when I heard about my old city, the place where we was taken from, I'm sad. The king didn't think that Nehemiah would do him no harm. Why? Because Nehemiah was so noble and so loyal to him. The king didn't think that Nehemiah would deceive him and try and hire and train men to be men of destruction of warfare. And then come back and take over. The king trusted Nehemiah. Now ain't this something when God put you in a place to be under somebody who should be an enemy to you. But give you favor and turn your enemy into a friend to you. You know what that brings me to this right here. Is that you got some folks that are in, not just your family. But some folks that are right within your own place that you work in. You cannot be a friend to them because why? They still stabbing you in your back. But then when you go down the street, across the road, around the corner, the place that the person who's supposed to be in competition with them is saying, look, I got a better proposition for you. This person got you over here doing this and they competing against us. Well, I don't want to compete against them because my property or my prosperity is not focused off of them. It's not built off of their reputation. My prosperity and focus is on the Lord. And where I want to prosper at is in the things of God. So I got a better proposition for you. If you come over here, this is what God is able to do. But if you stay over there, then God ain't can't do too much of nothing over there. What are you saying to me? I'm simply saying if Nehemiah would have stayed with the king, then he would have had little prosperity. But since the king released him and he went out of obedience because the king released him, he started walking in greater prosperity. That's why he was able to tell them, I started a work and I can't come down. I started something and I can't come down. It's something when people look at you and think that what you're doing is not of God. Do you know I got I got people who, well, not a lot of people, but I read between symbolic posts. And I have some folks who who be shooting at me because they don't they got a personal problem. They do. They got a real personal problem. I'm a troublemaker. I like to make trouble with the devil. I like to aggravate the devil that's in a person when a person thinks they serving God. Mm, my God. And I know this particular person has a personal problem. Because this particular person didn't get what they thought they were going to get. Mm -hmm. But because the work wasn't for me to do or give, they'll never get that. 
Sometimes people are so mad at God that they take it out on you. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes people are so mad at God that they are taking it out on you. I, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk like this for a minute, because this has got to be so. This this has got to be pure uncut. Jesus said, "Mothers will be against daughters," but you got some mothers who literally cannot stand their own daughter, and they get mad at God and they take it out on their daughter. And will kill their daughter. Y'all wow, wow. don't believe that, do you? Yeah. You, you, when you? You look around and you read and you see it on the news, you hear it, you read it on social media. A mother just killed six kids, six, three girls, and three boys. But when you look into details and do your research, you kind of find out she killed the daughters worse than she killed the sons. You got the hate. What you gave birth to, and that you can't tell me that if you're able to kill your own seed, you love the Lord. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? My God, my God. Fathers will hate their son. I, right now in school, in psychology, I just missed a question because I didn't think that that was the answer to the question. The question was on my IntelliPath, it asked a question about boys. When a boy wants to be, when they have this ill, they call it ill behavior. And there was a, some kind of word, I forgot the name of the word, a type of behavior. And the question based off was basically asking what would make a boy do this in order to do that? And one of the answers was that a boy will kill his father, will attempt to kill his father just so he can be with his own mother. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that it said that a, a boy will kill his own father or attempt to kill his father to be with his mother, I, I'm thinking maybe because the father was abusive, that ain't, no, 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 I went back and I, and when I didn't pick that answer, I picked some other answer that should have been psychologically correct, mm -hmm. it was incorrect, and when I hit view answer, and it showed me the correct answer, I went and researched that, I stopped my IntelliPath and I went and did some research on why would a boy attempt to kill his own father just to be with his mother, I didn't understand the wordplay. And then when I did my research, T, guess what he came up with? The boy was actually wanting to sleep around with his own mother. We call it incest, but they call it some other kind of behavior. They are changing now within this modern day word. They are changing the words of how they use and phrase different meanings. And watch this. This is why I say God got his people and Satan got his. The reason why I'm telling you this is because you're going to find a lot of preachers using certain words that's going to minister to you. And yet and still, it ain't going to be the words of life. But it's going to be words that's going to pull life right out of you. My God. They're going to pull it right out of you. You got to be careful with words. Yeah. Life and death. Death and life, rather. It's in the power of the tongue. People will speak words. The Bible said in Peter, Peter had wrote and said that people will have seducing spirits, taking on themselves seducing spirits. People gonna have itching ears. They gonna want to know whatever whatever sounds good. Give me what sounds good. But don't you go tell me that today is gonna be a day that uh, you mean to tell me I might go home and my mama might be laying that blooded up, cut up. You mean to tell me that what you gonna prophesy to me? That ain't no God. But then when God come and give you a word like that and tell you, get your heart in the right place. Because when you get ready to go home, and once you walk through the door, you might see a trail of blood. But you don't need to go no farther than that. We need to get those kind of people mindsets. Amen. You know why? Because watch this. If Nehemiah would have went and met them too in that secret place called, oh no, guess what? They would have killed Nehemiah. But thank God that God was ministering to Nehemiah about the word. The work that you're doing is so great that folks want to kill you behind what you do. Yeah. Boy, I done 
Say that again. The work that you do. Sometimes the work that you work in a relationship, people will try to kill you. Do you hear me? Because of the work that you work. You got folks that, watch this, the fair coming, right? Right? Talk to me up in here. The fair coming, ain't it? Do you know how many people going to get caught at the fair? Just happy? And somebody going to see that? That's a good thing. That's a good work. You don't work on that individual. They don't work on you. You two are together and saying you together forever. And all of a sudden, here comes some disrespectful. Slap. What you doing, man? That's just how it works. But if you have wisdom, you see the group of guys coming, could be. Come on, baby, let's get on this side. We ain't scared of nothing. But sometimes, say this, you just got to get out of harm's way. Look at somebody and tell them, sometimes you just got to get out of harm's way. If I see four, five thug youngsters in a grocery store, I'm going to use Walmart. Walmart, and they do dirty looking. Y'all know what do dirty look like, mm-hmm. you know. They look like they jealous of the next person, and they, they in Walmart already trying to steal boxes. Mm-hmm. They ain't in there to buy nothing. Mm-hmm. Come on here. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't like folks don't do that. They do. I, me and my wife, we watch, we watch some women come in Walmart and stole pennies. Uh. Just went in that call bag open, and we just steal them. We get over there. And took them drugs. I ran out of here with them pen. Stole. Just called open bags. Too cheap to buy. Too broke to want to try to get a job to buy. But if I see a group of guys, you think me and my wife are going to go down that same aisle? Wait. Then we can go and look around. You know why? Because I'm not trying to invite unwanted attention. Ain't no fear in me now. Right. Throw down. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But he said, be wiser than a serpent. But harmless as a dove. Uh-huh. So that brings me to my closing point. I went to the country and I drove down there and I looked. I looked at the building. I took a picture of it. I went over there and I saw what it looks like. It's horrible. And I said, oh Lord, that's a great work. But then I thought about it. And I know God gives you the mind to think. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, when we get here, if it be your will, Mm -hmm. we drive 75 miles here, 75 miles back Mm -hmm. to Shreveport. We got to deal with what if we get a call while we on the way home? Or what if we get a call in the middle of the night that somebody who found out, oh, the church that came back, let's burn them down. Now we got to try to get down there. That's 75 miles. That's about an hour drive. But then you got the same folks who are already down there ain't going to tell you nothing, don't know nothing, ain't seen nothing, but they sure heard it. Hey Lord, if this is the place called the wilderness for the church, and it was prophesied to me through the voice of God Himself, saying this is your training ground, you won't be here always. Why are you trying to go back to Egypt when I brought you through Exodus? Listen, y'all miss what I said. Why are you trying to go back to Egypt when I brought you through Exodus? Uh So this brings me to my last conclusion. And we go. Uh I won't hoop today. Yeah, y'all missed that. You you missed that Wednesday. We had church Wednesday. You 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 want us to hoop it today, then? Uh mm -mm. you missed that. Tell us you missed that Wednesday, then. Yeah, she wins that Wednesday. Yo, 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 man had me 
Have me holler till I ain't have no voice. <laughs> but this brings me to my last point. Nehemiah is each and every last one of us. Mm -hmm. There's a work in everybody's life Amen. that only you and you and God knows about yeah. that you started. Mm -hmm. You cannot forfeit that work. Because if you forfeit it, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to take longer for the process to be complete. Mm, my God. We always say trust the process. Mm. But what happens when we stop the process? Mm. What happens when we step on God's hand and say, mm -mm, don't you make another move, God? Mm. And God say, oh, trust me. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just trying to straighten up your steps. I was trying to make your crooked road straight. I was trying to run, uh, smooth out some of these rough roads that you about to walk down thinking you're going to walk over me. I know what's best. Let me tell you something. You can't pull yourself from nothing that your heart is in when God got your heart right there. I tried to give up ministry for many years. I don't just say, man, I wanted my normal life. I just want to be married to my wife. We have our family, and we be saved. We read our Bible. We we, we just pray, and and bye-bye. And, and uh -uh, don't do this religion, church stuff no more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bye-bye. No, no, no. I done packed the chairs up, put them in a the corner, took the platform, threw it outside, took the drum, took down the shield, took down the speakers, took the mic down, and then what messed me up, Travars, is when I end up putting on one of my gospel songs, and now I'm up in here and I hold it those times and I'm putting everything back like it's supposed to be. Back like it's supposed to be. Matter of fact, I'm putting it back better than what it was supposed to be. Y'all don't hear me up in here. Why should God have to take you around something in order for you to just do it right the first time? Somebody say, just do it right the first time. Just do it right the first time. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing down like the Iranian store. I'm closing down like the raceway should have closed last night. Just do it right the first time. Amen. If it's something that